How's it going, everyone? I am hanging out in Bryce Canyon National Park this weekend. It's uh, Easter weekend, so it's a little busy, uh, but not too bad so far anyway. Kind of the middle of the day, according to the park website, peak time is between about 10 and 2. Today's Friday. I'm staying Friday night, Saturday night, and then heading back home on Sunday. So just a quick weekend trip. Uh, it's about a three and a half hour drive from my house, so not not too bad. Pretty easy to do over a weekend. Uh, and I brought the large format kit with me. I've also brought the digital kit, but uh, just in case, because there's a, I have a better lens selection with the digital. So there's a chance that I may want to take some longer telephoto shots. Um, the digital will be good for that. But I'm packed full of film, so I'm hoping to shoot as much of that as I can. I've got some Mektar with me. I've actually got some black and white and some Provia slide film too, Provia 100F. Uh, I don't know if I'll get all of it shot. It's just a, you know, pretty much a two day trip. Um, I have Sunday morning too, if I, which I probably will come shoot sunrise on Sunday before I head home. So kind of two and a half days. But yeah, that's my, um, that's my plan for the Easter weekend is to expose some film in Bryce and take you guys along with me. On my way over to one of the viewpoints, um, I passed by this ponderosa tree just off the side of the road here that looks like it's had some fire damage um, and survived. The very top of it still got some green in it too. Um, but all of the fire damage has caused the bark to, the texture in the bark to really stand out because there's absolute black in between all the little pieces of bark and then the highlights are just the brown color of the ponderosa tree. Uh, and it's really cool looking. So. I went for a really, really tight composition. I just filled the entire frame completely with uh, just the bark. I didn't even worry about trying to capture anything else in the foreground or background. I just went for all bark, that's all it is. I guess it pushes the border between, you know, abstract and landscape photography, I suppose. But uh, I don't know, I just drove by and it just kind of clicked. I'm like, hey, I want to shoot that on black and white. And it's broad daylight right now too. So the sun's high and a really contrasting light. Um, but I do have a few clouds and the sun's behind one of them right now. So I'm actually waiting for the sun to come back out of the clouds so that I can have contrast. So the sun's coming in pretty much almost right off the right side of the frame. Um, and I've got my camera situated. I kind of walked it around the base, like rotated around the base of the tree so I can get the right side in direct sunlight with a lot of highlight on it and the left side in shadow a little bit. Although it's pushing the, the black parts of the bark into, you know, about zone three. Uh, which is okay because it is absolute black. So I'm shooting Kodak uh, T-Max 100 black and white negative film. Uh, my highlights look good. Uh, they're pushing the range of the, the dynamic range of the film, but it's black and white negative film. I'm not too worried about overexposing it. I think it'll be okay. All that talk and a couple of my studio videos about my large format notebook that I bought from B&H and I forgot it. <laughs> so I'm having to put all my notes and my exposure settings in my phone, uh, which is fine. So the sun's come back out of the clouds now, so I went ahead and uh, made a couple exposures. One with uh, the tree in broad sunlight, just bright sunlight. Uh, it was pretty contrasty photo, so that's kind of what I was going for. And then I took a second exposure, kind of a safety shot, but I waited. The sun's just like barely on the edge of a cloud right now, so I waited till it almost tucked in behind a cloud so that my, you know, my highlights were metering just about a half a stop um, lower and then took a second shot. So this should be about a half a stop under what the first one was, just in case the first one's overexposed, which I kinda, I don't think so, it should be okay. Uh, so my exposure on this was uh, half a second, one over two, uh, which actually was pushing it just about a half a stop over um, on purpose because my bellows, although it's not terribly extended, I don't think it really extended it far enough to have to 
uh, really calculate for bellows extension, but I gave it an extra half stop just in case anyway. Um, and it is negative film, so hopefully that was a good decision to make. Um, and if not, I've got the second safety shot, which was a half stop less. So that's pretty much a wrap. That's the first shot here in Bryce. Um, it's funny that the very first thing that I chose to shoot with all the hoodoos and cool rock formations, I chose a ponderosa tree. But hey, you know, it grabbed my attention and uh, it was something I could work with, you know, instead of all the busy trailheads and stuff. It was uh, it was pretty satisfying to be able to just sit up out here and work, you know. I got plenty of looks <laughs> from cars going by watching me work this old tiny camera underneath the dark cloth and whatever. It's kind of fun. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's the first two shots in the bag. Um, I'm not so sure about where my truck's parked right now, so I think I'm going to pack things up and get back there and move my truck before I get yelled at, so. So here are those two exposures of the tree. And to be honest, I have a real hard time trying to tell which one's which. Uh, if I had a guess, I'd say maybe this one was a half stop brighter exposure. Uh, just because to my eyes, it looks like this is maybe just a tad bit brighter. Uh, but I really honestly can't tell. I was happy though that uh, I have edge to edge sharpness. So from corner to corner, uh, all the details in focus. Uh, and I've got detail on the shadows as well as the highlights. Uh, so it looks like it's exposed pretty well. My only complaint with it is that uh, some of this looks a little funny here when I scanned in and had to work on it a little bit just because the lighting conditions weren't really conducive to this. Um, you just can't replace good light. So yeah, but all in all, uh, I think they turned out just fine. Later that evening, I went down one of the main trails into the hoodoos with my 4x5 camera in search for a sunset location. And I didn't get very far down the path before I did find something that I was interested in setting up on. Thing is, a couple times during this trip, I found myself a little underprepared with the video kit and, uh, well, my battery died shortly after shooting these B-roll clips. But the summary version is I set up a vertical composition on one of these hoodoos that had last little bits of sunlight hitting the very top of it. If I remember right, my metered exposure was two seconds at F32. But to be honest, I didn't actually write it down. Because just after taking these two exposures, I ended up in a conversation with some really nice people who took an interest in my camera. So I was a little distracted. So here's the two Ektar shots uh, of the shot that I took that evening. Um, looks like the exposures turned out, they are pretty bright. This is just about pushing the limit here, but there is detail there and they're sharp. Even the trees way in the background here are in focus uh, as well as the foreground here. So excited for that. Um, I'll have to see when we get them scanned in because looks like this is going to be just about at the limits of the film. But there is detail there. Looks like this one has got slightly more detail to it. So, so far it looks pretty promising. A little bright, but promising. Thanks as always for watching, and if you'd like to see how the rest of my Bryce Canyon trip went, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.